I know we're not getting an official depth chart anymore, but please, Billy, make some changes to it. Please? You are Locked On Gators, your daily podcast on the Florida Gators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Locked On Gators, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Gators your first listen of the day every day. We are available daily and free reviews in the podcast and on YouTube. Happy Wednesday. I am Brandon Olson. Find me on Twitter, WNS underscore Brandon. Joining me later will be Hayden Hanson, Florida Gators starting tight end. Today's episode of Locked On Gators is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. You should locked on college for twenty dollars off your first purchase. And Billy Napier is no longer releasing official depth charts. That's been a thing since SEC play opened up, where essentially he went, you know what? We need to release an availability report. That's as good as you're getting from me. Um, which you know, I know people hate and people are gonna talk about it and people are gonna always hang up. I don't I don't care personally too much. I would like a depth chart. I don't care too much because I feel like even when people were listed as starters or, or second string, they weren't seeing snaps like that. So I don't think that it's as really important for the depth chart. However, when we talk about this depth chart in this instance, we're talking about who's actually playing, what the actual chart is, even though there's not a chart, that kind of stuff. Um, and for me, first off, Trayon Webb, who, again, uh, last season and all off season. I spent this time going, you know what? I'm not sold on Trayon. I don't think he looked good in 2023. I don't think he looked great at all there. I didn't think the spring game was an incredible thing. But he, this season, is running angry. Uh, he's running better. He's more decisive. I don't know what it is. If it's literally, hey, the game has kind of slowed down for you, or, or whatever it may be, just getting a better feel for the game now that he's working in, in more tight quarters. Um, but man, he's looked way better this year. And in my opinion, I think he's looked like the best overall back on a consistent basis. And by that, I mean, Jaden Balls looked good, but he's getting three carries a game. Jacoby Jackson's looked good. He's getting three carries a game. So stuff like that. I can't really, I, I, I can't sit there and go, oh yeah, def like they're obviously so much better with a, with a larger sample size. Because we don't know that. What I can tell you is that when we look at the two running backs that have seen a decent sample size, it's Trayon Webb, Montreal Johnson, uh, and Trayon's been the more effective runner, I believe, between he and Montreal. I think Trayon Webb's been the most effective. And I also think that this season, Trayon Webb has kind of emerged as your best pass blocking back. We haven't seen much from any of the backs as far as pass pro goes, but Trayon has looked like the most willing, and he looks like he knows what he's doing more than Montreal specifically, who, remember, the thing with Montreal was never that he was a good pass blocking back. It was that he was all right at it, he, and that was it. Like, like, he was all right. Trevor Etienne was horrendous, so that was the claim. But keep in mind here, where we care about running back pass blocking, and here on Lockdown Gators, where we talked about Trevor Etienne's pass blocking deficiencies when he was a true freshman before he transferred, before any of that. Here, we love running backs and pass protection. And here, we acknowledge that half of it is just effort, want to. Uh, and I think Trayon Webb has shown the want to, but he's also shown the ability to, to light some people up when he's chipping and also to properly make his check and release read. Another change I'd like to see on offense, interior offensive line, Bryce Lovett should be starting. Uh, personally, I would start Bryce Lovett and Najee Harris at both of the guard spots. I don't care which one plays which spot. Um, they both played left guard against Mississippi State, and they were the ones rotating at that spot. I would personally, again, like to see one of them at left guard, one of them at right guard. I don't care who wants to go where. They're your better options, in my opinion. I also don't think Najee Harris has been great with a larger sample size this year. Um, don't think he's been great. But I still think that he's been definitely better than Cam Waits at guard. And Damian George hasn't been as bad as people say. He's still not good. But he hasn't been as bad as people say. Um, 
I think his run blocking has gotten worse on the interior, which makes sense. He's dealing more with defensive tackles now and not able to move people as much. Um, but I think that when you look at the offensive line, one fix is to put Bryce Lovett in there as a starter with Najee Harris on either side, again, of Jake Slaughter at center. And I think that gives you your most promising offensive line. I don't know if there's a clear-cut, good offensive line combination to put out there. I want, I want to be clear about that. I'm not saying this is the, the fix that gives you the, uh, the is it the, the more award, the, the best offensive line. This will give you the more. I don't think that, but I think that there's a combination where you go, hey, they might not be great. They're already not great. At least this way, we put in young guys, have more potential, pop potential to be like, oh, well, maybe they take a, a drastic development. Because again, a lot of the time, development isn't linear. It's guys taking big jumps. And a lot of that comes with experience. And so when you have guys who play together and work together and gel together, you have a pretty decent shot of, hey, they might pop off together. You know, like they might develop and they might grow. So Maybe take the swing there with Bryce Lovett and Najee Harris. And then defensively, uh, I have one, one suggestion, we'll say. And I mentioned it earlier this week as a potential fix to your pass rush. And that is to put Caleb Banks at the nose tackle spot and to put Kelby Collins at the big end spot. Okay. Um, yes, that would require putting Cam Jackson on the bat on the bench. That's fine with me. I'm not tied to anybody on that defensive line right now. I think that Caleb Banks and Kelby Collins, though, uh, which, by the way, I know the immediate response to this is going to be, but that makes you way too light on the inside. That leaves you light against the run. That that leaves you weak against the run there. Well, guess what, buddy? Right now, they're weak against the run, and they're weak against the pass. At least putting Caleb Banks and Kelby Collins in there maybe makes you better against the pass because – the duo of Cam Jackson and Caleb Banks together was supposed to be a good duo when stopping the run. And that hasn't happened yet. And so I propose say, all right, if we're going to be bad at defending the run, that's what we're going to be bad at. But what we're going to do is be good at rushing the passer from the interior. So Caleb Banks and Kelby Collins there. I think Kelby has looked good in every opportunity he's been given. I just don't think he's been given enough. Also, Joey Slackman's status at this point is still up in the air. So we'll see what goes on with that. But I think that there's a path to having a decent pass rush with rushing four and not needing to blitz. I don't think Florida's taken the ideal approach to get there. And so I would like to make the suggestion of maybe making that your interior defensive line duo and maybe having a somewhat respectable pass rush when it's all said and done. Uh, I will say that, yeah, obviously linebackers will need to step up. Edge rushers will need to step up all throughout uh, linebackers and run defense edge, both as run defenders and pass rushers. But right now, this is a team that's struggling to rush the passer, even when blitzing. You've got to figure something out. And I feel like making this personnel change of Caleb Banks at the nose and Kelby Collins at the big end, maybe Joey Slapman at the big end. I feel like that's your best combination. That's your best bet to actually be able to generate a pass rush on the interior there. We are about to be joined by Hayden Hanson, Florida Gators starting tight end, next on Locked on Gators. Game Time has a new feature called Game Time Picks. and it's getting tickets for your favorite live events even easier. Game Time Picks filters out the fluff to show you only incredible deals on great seats so you don't have to waste time searching through thousands of tickets. I've said before, I exclusively use Game Time to get tickets now. Um, how many times do I have to rattle off the events I've went to this year alone? Using game time, it was uh, three Mets games, Florida Gators opener, um, four concerts, three concerts and one concert upcoming, right? Yeah, three concerts and one upcoming concert at the end of October. Game time is the best place to go, right? And they have their lowest price guarantee. So if you find a ticket in the same section and row for less, they'll credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guess we're going to buying tickets with game time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. Joining me now for Locked On Gators is Hayden Hanson, Florida Gators starting tight end. And Hayden, earlier this week, Graham Mertz mentioned that you know the, the bye week was fun. 
He said that it felt like fall camp again. Just, just what was that like from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, it was really cool. Um, Napier had it set up to where it was really competitive, really fun. He um, split the teams up. It wasn't like it was starters versus backups. It was really a, a really good mix of guys, really competitive. And it was fun, you know, kept score. Losers ran gassers um, before every before and after every period. Um, and he kind of just pointed out at the practice, he was like, you might not have noticed it, but for the hour and a half we just practiced, you blocked out any outside noise, and all you worried about was helping your team beat the other team. He's like, that's what we got to do, and we have to execute that. So, I mean, I think we do have a lot of momentum going into this week. Yeah, and how was that different from previous bye weeks? Because you're one of the players that have been there for multiple years. Uh, so, so, just what's that – how is that different from what you guys did, let's say, last year in your bye week? Yeah, last year it was more developmental for younger guys. I think some of the older guys got a little time off. Um, so, it was a lot uh, better. But, um, I mean, at the end of the day, it's good for everybody – to get their reps in, especially we struggled uh, earlier on. So it was, it was good for everyone just to keep going, keep all the reps on. So, yeah. And let's say while we're talking fall camp things, just from the start of fall camp until now that we're in October, basically been what, two months since you guys have started full pad with fall camp and everything. What do you think has been maybe the biggest area of improvement for the offense specifically? Yeah, so you're saying since fall camp? Yeah, like where you guys have grown the most since the beginning. Yeah, I think the uh, our tempo, our tempo is really good. Our like our fastball lineups um, get on the ball snap. I think that's always been good. I just think that continues to get better. Um, <clears throat> the O line communication is getting better every week. We got to get that to a premium. Um, but yeah, that's kind of one of the things I noticed this bye week is um, we're 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 right here about to catch fire. We just have to keep going. Like we have the pieces we need. We just have to put it all together. And um, coming off a win against Mississippi State, beating UCF, hitting that hitting that two games win streak in a row right before that really long gauntlet of a schedule, we, we got to do that. So, yeah, and, and I'm curious from your perspective again as an actual player that deals with the trenches, um, what what is it like communication wise pre snap? Like, like what do you guys really? Is it as simple as just calling out who's got who, or or just what's that like pre snap for the offense? Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's different for every position, you know. Tight ends, <laughs> it's a lot. You got to hear everybody. Um, but I mean, I think it's pretty traditional, just like everybody else. You know, center call out the mic, go from there. Just depends on the play, if it's a pass protection, you know. But uh, definitely just position specific. And for you as the tight end again, while we're talking position specific, what is it like for obviously? Obviously, you can't give details about things, but just as far as prep work for the opposing team? Because I feel like you're one of the few guys who you genuinely have to worry about blocking and receiving. Um, I'm assuming you're going to have some plays where it might you might have a check and release or something like that. So just what's that like for you film-wise where it's not as simple as just watching what the trench players do, but also linebackers and safeties? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot of details. You know, you, you don't want to go into a game thinking, oh, I don't know if they do this or not. You definitely want to have your answers. Um, and UCF, I mean, they're they're decent. You know, they're up front. They they can definitely rush. They can rush the passer for sure. Um, they got a lot of tricks up their sleeves. So I've been I looked at that for a lot today. Um, I feel like my pass has improved from last year, and I'm trying to keep that up. And uh, this will be a really good test. Um, and I mean, their linebackers. We played against um, his name Ethan Barr, I think. Yeah, Ethan Barr from Vanderbilt. He transferred there. He's their middle linebacker. He's kind of like the quarterback of their defense. So um, I mean, there's a little familiarity there, you know. So looking forward to it. I mean, you mentioned quarterback of the defense, familiarity there, a little bit of familiarity with their literal quarterback of the offense with KJ Jefferson, of course, Arkansas quarterback last year when they came into the swamp. Is there a little extra something? Like I feel like we know there's there's something extra just being an in-state game, but is there a little something extra considering KJ Jefferson was Arkansas QB last year? Um, I don't know. You might have to ask Stevens on that one. Um, I don't really think – I think it's enough that it's just UCF. Um, we know that this is going to be a game. They're, they're coming off a, a bad loss to Colorado, so they're going to be ready to get the taste out of their mouth. We know how that feels. So we have to be ready for a fight. You know, We have to take it to them. We can't start slow. we got to start fast and um, minimize the mistakes. And, you know, we got, we got to f- keep figuring out ways to win. From a, a player perspective, how do you guys kind of view the in-state – 
hierarchy, obviously, we're going to say Florida's at the top of that. They're always going to be there. I don't care about anybody's record. Um, but looking at the other now big four programs, as much as we want to say big three, there's four in the power four. So how do you guys look at that kind of in-state situation where you guys get to play all three? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a cool scenario. You know, obviously, we would have liked to perform better against Miami. Um, I mean, they got the bragging match for this year. You know, can't really say much there. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, we have the logo. We have the name. We just got to play like it, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's really fun, you know. I mean, for me, I mean, I'm not even from Florida. I just – I feel how cool that is. I, I just think about that, like, if I went to a Texas school doing that, that's, like, almost unheard of, you know. So take advantage of it. Yeah, it, it, it's also one of those things where it's incredibly difficult to just do, but it's incredibly difficult to just even – have the opportunity to do that and, and play all of the power four schools in your conference. Um, and I wanted to shift a little bit to just the team overall. Just what would you say is, I, I guess we'll go with the identity of this Florida Gators team this year. Yeah. I mean, I think um, like over the course of the season, as it keeps going, it's gotta be something like grit, you know, just not giving up. I mean, it's easy to get on your phone, see what's going on, talking about the future of the program, what could happen, this and that. Um, but just guys haven't gave up, you know. Uh, you see that at some other programs sometimes that have a rough start. You know, we're 2-2, we're two and two, just came off a win. Um, there's no reason why we can't flip this whole narrative around. I, I have to ask there, too, because it's become increasingly common for guys to go, oh, things haven't gone my way for the first three or four weeks of the season. Uh, I'm in a red shirt and then portal just as, as a player, just, just what's your thought on that? Cause again, that's, that's something that wasn't as common a thing. And now, I mean, we, we've seen what 10 players do it within the past week alone, make that announcement. Yeah. I mean, and that kind of goes back to, I know there's some people out there saying that Napier's lost the locker room. Players don't believe in him. I think that's a testament to, we do still believe in him. He still has control of the locker room. I don't think we've had one guy come out in red shirt yet. And I think there's still a belief. There's still a belief in the work we've done. We know that it's not all the coach's fault. It's the player's fault as well. And we can get this thing turned around. I mean, we're, we're, I mean, we're this, this close. We just got to keep winning games. Hey, NFL fans, you can start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports. But I'm going to tell you about a big return I got from Monday Night Football. It's, it's nice. I'm not going to lie. Um, let me just pull this one up real quick. Again, Monday Night Football. It was... Lions, Seahawks, uh, nobody made money from Miami versus Tennessee. Um, but I hit a plus 29.80 bet, so I bet $10. I won 308.08 from it. Jared Goff, over 245, 44.5 passing yards. Geno Smith, over 252.5 passing yards. DK Metcalf, over 66.5 passing yards. Jamison Williams, over 44.5 passing yards, or receiving yards, sorry for DK as well. Kenneth Walker and Amon Ross St. Brown, touchdown. Beautiful cash. It was great. It was great. You'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Yeah, and, and that's another thing I wanted to talk about with the just mentality of this team. Like, two and two, you can turn things around at this point. Just, I, I don't care how anybody feels. It's a fact. You can turn things around. There's a ton of outside noise. We've talked about it before. If you've any liked anything about Florida and you've opened Twitter in the past month, you've probably seen a tweet straight up, we'll just say, calling for Billy Napier's job. You've probably seen a tweet about that or or a tweet about Lane Kiffin or whoever people are going to talk about there. But just what is that like from a team mentality perspective of trying to finish this season while blocking out the outside noise? And you mentioned, you know, Napier said it during the bye week for the past hour and a half. You guys have done that. So just what's that like to kind of get that to carry over and consistently pull through this season? Yeah, I mean, it's harder for some people than it is others. You know, for me, I can care less what anyone says unless they're in the building. Um, but, I mean, guys, I mean, let's, let's just be real. People are on their phones all the time, and you see that stuff. And if maybe if a guy on the team isn't playing and he sees that and he starts thinking that stuff, you know. But we really haven't had that problem. Um, but, I mean, it's just the, the easiest way to make this go away is to win games. That's point blank. You know, the same people that are dragging us on Twitter, dragging Napier, will be the same ones praising us if you go out and win these next five in a row and upset Tennessee at home, you know. So, I mean, just, it's good to keep that in mind. And, um, I mean, yeah, some of this criticism we've gotten, I mean, we, we didn't play up to the Florida Gator standards. So some of it's deserved. Some of it's a little over the top. But um, 
I mean, that's the easiest way to um, just shut up all the haters on Twitter or whatever is just go win games, you know? Yeah, it, it's truly as simple. And, you know, the uh, saying winning, winning cures everything, winning heals everything. It, it's as simple as that, I feel like, with this program right now. Um, one of the things that the team has struggled with so far is that Florida right now is one of the most heavily penalized teams in, in the country. Just as a team, both offense and defense, I don't feel like there's been any glaring repeat offenders. So it's not like like Laramie Tunsil in the NFL has the most false starts ever for an offensive lineman because he just constantly gets it. It's not like there's that situation. It seems like there's kind of just always something boneheaded or we we can call a bad call a bad call. Like the, uh, the, the Triquiz Bridges targeting was weird. I get the head down thing. It was just a weird call, a bad call. Disagree with it, of course. But – how do you guys kind of go about correcting that once you're in the season? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's definitely always been a point of emphasis, keeping your cool, your composure, not doing dumb things. We have gotten a little short end of the stick on those calls, like uh, Montrell's like blindside blocks. Um, like, so some of those are you can you can kind of say, well, I mean, what do you want us to do? But there's other ones that we can definitely fix and that we're definitely not smart. Uh, and we, we practice that. We practice those in situations, uh, the situational scripts and practice and things like that. So, I mean, we're prepared. And, and again, and that goes back to our fault, not the coach's fault. I mean, that, that impacts the game a lot, you know, and that's stuff we have to clean up. Yeah. And uh, I wanted you to tell me about a specific player, if you can, for a little bit. It, it, it's Jack Pyburn. Uh, I feel like he joined the team when the 2022 class was kind of thought of as one of the lower tier players, just his recruiting ranking was one of the lower tier players there. And he went from that lower tier recruiting status to never redshirting, just, just like playing throughout sees significant playing time now. And Billy Napier just said the other day in a press conference, when they were asked, Hey, who needs to play more? He was like, the first name he came out with was Jack Barber. He's like Jack Barber and someone that, deserves more of that playing time that he should see more of that playing time. So I'm just curious about the relative public unknown that is Jack Pyburn. Yeah. I mean, I mean, everything you just said is completely true. And I agree with coach Napier. I mean, since day one, that guy's been a problem to deal with, you know, going up against practice with him. If you don't bring your a game, he's going to expose you, you know, um, that's a big reason why he ended up not registering his freshman year. We all came in, you know, bright eyed, um, he took advantage of special teams. Like they had this thing called job takers where like all, basically all the freshmen, we were all on job takers and he'd run that on cover every single time and put one of the starters just flat on their butt or like knock someone out. Just knock the crap out of them. Napier eventually was just like, we got to find something for this guy to do. He's going to hurt somebody, you know? So I mean, it's, he has a really cool story. Um, really good Testament for hard work where it gets you. And, um, it's good to see it's finally paying off. I'm excited to see what happens when he starts. Yeah, I've also got to ask what he's like in the weight room because he looks like an absolute unit. So I'm, I, I just got to ask what he's like in the weight room there. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, whatever you see is as you can imagine. I mean, he just he lifts a lot of weight. He takes care of his body, eats right, you know, and um, yeah, he definitely moves some weight around. And uh, before we let you go, you know how we do it with with a not really football football Jason question. We could say it. Uh, I'd appreciate it if you can kind of talk me through. Gator made a little bit in your experience with it. Uh, we, we know you've taken two trips, right? You had the New York trip last year and Cali this past uh, off season, if I'm not mistaken, you were there man of the month in, in March. So you had that just what's Gator made been to you and what's it mean to you? Yeah. I mean, Savannah Bailey does a great job. She's the kind of the head of it. Um, and it's, it's awesome. You know, my last year for the spring break, they call it the business break business trip. I went to New York. Um, with a pretty good group of guys, um, Crawshaw, Rocco, or some of the guys I stayed with. Um, it was fun. I mean, New York was definitely an experience. You know, I'm from a small town in Texas. I never thought I'd ever step foot in New York. But uh, it was definitely an experience. Met a lot of cool companies like Instagram, Facebook, um, a lot of the stock markets. Um, pretty cool. And then um, the, I guess you could say this spring break, I went to L.A. That was even that was even cooler. Um, Santa Monica, got to go to the beaches a lot. Completely different vibe. Like we we met the NFL headquarters in LA and New York. Completely different vibe. It was insane. We uh, also went to the Lakers facility. Got to see LeBron James locker. That was pretty cool. Um, there was uh, I'm trying to remember some of the, these other companies. We met Google. Google was pretty cool. We met um, Activision. Got to see a lot of Call of Duty stuff behind the scenes. Which yeah, was really cool. one of my favorite part. Like zombies. Like they even had a little ghost statue in there. 
Um, so that was pretty cool. But, uh, but yeah, it just opens your eyes so much because, I mean, this game's going to end for everybody at some point, and you want to have at least an idea of what you want to do. And we do these networking events. Like the last day we go, like if there's a Gator alumni in the state, they'll come to this bar and we'll all just like network and talk and like exchange LinkedIn's. And I mean, that's, it's really cool. Uh, I still have connections. I talked to you today from both of those trips. So, and there was one of those trips, you guys went to a, a studio, right? That was New York Republic records. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I remember the, the, I'm pretty sure they put out a video of that. I think you were playing guitar. Do you play guitar? Is that a thing? Or were you kind of just screwing around with one? Well, I'm in the process. I'm learning. I cannot do it right now, but I'm learning. Yeah. Yeah. My, uh, my cousin used to be in a, in a, pop punk band and he tried to teach me and i was like now nah, i'm just it's harder than it looks harder yeah than it looks. i i gave it maybe like a week of him teaching me and, and quickly gave that up i was like I'm, I'm i'm good on that one thank you uh air guitar is fine with me but thank you so much hayden this is hayden hansen florida gators starting to end. catch him every week on locked on gators and every saturday with your florida gators Thanks for being Locked On Gators, your first listen of the day. Every day we are available daily and free breakfast in the podcast and on YouTube. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Florida Gators football for Locked On Gators. I'm Brandon Olson. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter at WNS underscore Brandon. Find all my written work with New York Giants on SI, and I'll see you all next time.